Juniper 52385, Kentuckiana's popular program of comment and opinion. Juniper 52385, tonight asking this question. What's it like to be a world-famous boxer? Tonight, meet Cassius Clay. Express your views by phoning Juniper 52385. Awaiting your call at this end of the line is Milton Metz. Hello again. Metz here at Juniper 52385. Most youngsters at one time or another want to grow up to be a big league baseball star or a television cowboy or the world's heavyweight boxing champion. No one in the history of boxing has been more vocal in the pursuit of his goal, that of the last name that's to be world heavyweight boxing champ, than the young man who sits beside me tonight. Although many, many people believe he will achieve his goal, no one believes it more deeply and sincerely than he himself. At 20, he has already acclaimed the fourth-ranked heavyweight in the world. More honor has come to him than most men twice his age. He is, among other things, a former national Golden Gloves champion, a former national AAU title holder, and champion in the Olympics. With all those amateur titles, every one of the top amateur spots, he then entered the professional boxing ranks and has yet to be defeated. He was just given the fourth ranking in the heavyweight ranks, was named Boxer of the Month. Those are a lot of honors for a young man of 20 years. Well, we have Cassius Marcellus Clay with us tonight. And for the next 90 minutes, he will be talking with you and with me about how it feels to be a world-famous boxer. Give us a call here at Juniper 52385 if there are any questions you would like to ask Cassius or if there's anything you'd like to talk to him about. We'll be here until 10 tonight. Not only do we count on calls from our good friends here in Kentucky and Indiana, but of course anywhere in the United States within the sound of this program. Incidentally, for tonight, while we have a guest on, please give your name when you're connected with me. And one never knows what Cassius will say. He is the epitome of self-confidence and belief in his own destiny. He has been known to compose his own poetry, but I don't know whether he'll be doing that or not tonight. What's it like to be a world-famous boxer? Tonight, meet Cassius Clay at Juniper 5, 2385. Hello, Mets here. Hello, this is James King. Yes, James. I'd like to ask Cassius, what advantage does Sonny Liston have over him, and what advantage does he have over Sonny Liston? Well, James, Sonny Liston has one advantage over me, as far as I'm concerned, and that's age. Sonny Liston is about 29 or 30 years old. I'm 20 years old. With me, as you know, that makes no difference. The advantages I have over Sonny Liston, I have the reach, I have the speed, the footwork, the class, and brain power. Okay. Thank you, young man. All right. Good night. Hello, Mets here. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Clay if uh, he ever fought a boy by the name of James Ellis here in Lowell as an amateur on the Golden Gloves, and if he won or lost. I fought a fellow by the name of James Ellis here. And as a matter of fact, that was one of my toughest amateur fights. He's a upcoming professional from Louisville now. He's fighting here soon, and I think he's going to be the next middleweight champion in about two or three years. I fought James Ellis twice. He beat me the first time, and I beat him the second time, I think it was. Or was it by a knockout in the second uh, fight or what? Uh, well, if it was a knockout, then you know that I didn't get knocked out. Knocked out, because I never uh, f fall. I never get knocked out. And uh, it was not a knockout. It was two decisions, but never connect me with any knockouts because great fighters don't get knocked out. Okay, and thank you. Thank Hello. you, sir. Hello. Hello, uh, my name is Richard Lewis. And I want to ask uh, Cassius. Uh, I saw in the paper tonight that uh, the manager of Cleve Cleveland Williams, who is a fifth-ranked fighter, uh, if, if you, and he offered $100,000 uh, $100, or $10,000 for every round, uh, Cassius could stay in against him. Are you seriously concerned fighting him? Well, I'm not only seriously con seriously concerned, but I'm seriously surprised. Uh, a fellow like Cleveland Williams, uh, uh, my normal prediction, as you know, I'm the only fighter in the history of the fight game who predict the round. Uh, I predict that uh, 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 these fellows are real serious, and uh, if he's going to offer me $10,000 a round for every round I go with this Mr. Cleveland Williams. Well, I predict again that this will be the only fight that I will not predict a round in <laughs> because I want to go as many rounds as possible. But if so, if he permits 
me to still receive the full amount of money if I should knock him out, then the prediction is three rounds. Cleveland Williams must fall in three. Uh, okay, and I want, uh, he said that, that you would need medical bills, stuff like that, if you fought Cleveland Williams, that he would... Uh, well, that's, that's, would just, that's just his talk. Uh, uh, with just the mere 16 professional fights under my belt, and at the tender age of 20 years old, these fellows all over the world, the fight promoters, the managers, trainers, and fighters themselves, can't understand why I am ranked over their boys. It's because I have the most color, I'm the classiest, and uh, I, I'm, I'm ticket box. I have ticket box appeal, and if any of these fellows think that they can beat me, I'm always willing to try. I'm the most outspoken fighter in the ring today, and also the most feared. I'll fight any one of these boys at any time given, and I will also call around if necessary. And if I don't, if the round don't come the way I want it, then I'll leave the country. Thank you, sir. All right. Good night. Hello. Uh, what's the bill file, 1835 Farms Road? Yes, sir, Mr. Sykes. Uh, Cassius Clay said uh, Archie Moore hit him the hardest of all fighters. Uh, what about the night Billy Daniels knocked him down? Was that a left test? No, that was not Billy Daniels, sir. A lot of people get him confused with Sonny Banks. That boy, his name was Sonny Banks. He did hit me with a left hook. Uh, I, I was not down long enough for the referee to count, but also that was a national televised fight. I predicted that Banks must fall in four rounds. I got off of the floor and stopped him in four. Uh, who hit you the hardest, Cassius? Which well, uh, uh, Archie Moore, I would say, but I didn't show it. Great fighters don't show it when they get hit. Sugar Ray Robinson is one of the greatest of all times, I'd say. Uh, and also Joe Lewis, and a lot of times these guys were shook, but you couldn't tell it. You never know when I'm stunned. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Hello? Mitch, it's Tom Cargill. Hello there, Mr. Cargill. Uh, good evening, Mr. Clay. Uh, I'd like to uh, say, first of all, when I saw him on uh, What's Your Question, uh, I didn't think much of, much of him before. I thought he was a little bit too cocky for me, but I think he's a pretty nice fellow now. I can see what he's doing. I'd like to ask uh, uh, Mr. Clay this question. Uh, have you ever considered uh, in your, uh, your, your I, I hate to call it a front because uh, that, I don't mean to think that it, maybe it is a front, but psychologically, do you think this is uh, uh, doing you a tremendous uh, uh, help by uh, uh, going up to somebody or saying, uh, I'm going to get you in three rounds and that's the end of it. Well, I, n I understand what you mean. A lot of people have their own opinions. I noticed when you said you saw me on What's Your Question, you didn't like me until then, and then after you saw me, you, uh, you, you, you realized what was going on. Well, a lot of people say they see what's going on. This is just a lot of talk to build up publicity. This is just a lot of talk to stir up the people. But people and boxing experts will tell you, I not only talk, I'm not only a talker. When I say the man's going to fall in four or five or six rounds, he do fall. So that way, you can't call me a talker. I believe and I'm very serious in everything I say because if I should lose, as a matter of fact, from being from a town like Louisville, Kentucky, I couldn't come back. So uh, you, you can believe that I'm going to back up everything I say or, as I said before, leave the country. <laughs> well, I, I was wondering whether it was a matter of... Uh, this is not only a gimmick. I mean every word I say, and anybody who's at ringside to witness me will tell you that I'm awful swift, I hit awful hard, and I'm awful serious when the bell rings. This is not only talk. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Carter. I think we're glad to have him from Louisville, Mr. Matt. Thank you very much. Right on. We'll continue with more calls. Our subject tonight... What's it like to be a world-famous boxer? Tonight, meet Cassius Clay. The number is Juniper 52385. More calls in one minute. During the holidays, you'll probably be doing some extra entertaining. Friends will be dropping in to share the fun of the holiday season. Extra entertaining calls for extra cartons of Fall City beer. So when you're planning your holiday shopping list, be sure to include plenty of taste-pleasing Fall City beer. You'll know you're giving and serving premium quality beer. Bitter Free Fall City beer is carefully brewed, and only the finest ingredients are used. Then, at the peak of perfection, Fall City beer is pasteurized to capture this quality and flavor. Although you might expect to pay more for this premium quality, Fall City beer is popularly priced. Stock up now for the holidays. Give and serve Fall City beer. It's the popular one. Look for the special holiday display of Fall City beer at your favorite store or tavern. 
Pick up an extra supply of these bright red and white 6 or 12 can cartons or a 24 bottle case. Fall City Beer, the beer that gives you more of what beer's for, enjoyment. Back again on Juniper 5, Milton Metz with Cassius Clay. Hello. Hello. Yes. This is James Caldwell. Yes, Mr. Caldwell. And I'd like to ask Cassius a question. He's listening. Uh, Cassius? Yeah. Uh, when will you promise me that you will come to Central when you win the championship? Well, as a matter of fact, I was thinking about coming to buy Central the other day, but I'm so tied up. I have so I have fan mail coming from all parts of the world, any country you can name. I have a lot of appointments, and I really haven't had time to to hardly eat my breakfast. But when I do get, well, as far as coming to Central High School, I'm not only going to Central High, but I'm going anywhere. Anywhere, not only Central High, but anywhere. Well, you promised me when you win the championship that you would come to Central. Well, that well, well, is Central in Louisville. <laughs> well, if it's in, well, uh, you, the, you, that's nothing hard. But what's hard about coming to Central is on 12th and Chestnut Street. It, I'd be glad to come by Central. As a matter of fact, that's the school I came through. Well, I think you've got your promise. Well, okay, thank you. Righto, thank you. Hello. <laughs> This is Martin Cassidy, Jr. Yes, Martin. To ask Cassius, um, when is he going to retire, and what does he plan to do after he does retire? Well, I had a write-up in Sport Illustrated this month. Uh, 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 I, I plan to retire in about, I, I predicted I would hold a championship with the fighters that we have around now of that caliber. I predi predicted I'd hold a championship after I get it for 10 years at least. And then when I do retire, I want to sit down in my $175,000 home and collect rent from a $500,000 apartment house. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, Martin. Good night. Hey, hello, Matt's here. Do you think, uh, this is Steve Griesbach, do you think Sonny Liston is as great as uh, Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray Robinson? No, he's not. Sonny Liston will not compare with Joe Lewis. Sonny Liston will not compare with Sugar Ray Robinson. And Sonny Liston will not compare with Cassius Clay. And I will prove that when we meet. The fight is scheduled for eight rounds. This will be an eight-round prediction. And he's popping off about, he says something about, I won't go ten seconds with him, or eight seconds. I told him if he keep popping off, I'm cutting it to six rounds. Uh, your question was, is he as great as Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray? He will not compare with Joe Lewis and Sugar Ray. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, this is Donnie Potter. Yes, Donnie. Uh, I'd like to ask Cash's question. All right. Uh, Go right ahead. You just uh, said that you would always say what uh, round your opponent would fall in. Right. So I'd like to know if you fought Eddie Macon, what round you predict the knockout in? Well, Eddie Macon would go about seven rounds with me. Seven rounds? Round seven. If I say seven, put your money on seven. Okay, thank you. Good night. This is Juniper 52385. Hello. Uh, this is Kenneth Koppel. Yes. Go ahead. I want to ask Cassius Clay uh, a question. Right here. Uh, well, when will you fight in Louisville, and who will you fight? Well, uh, I would fight in Louisville tonight if I could. I have a lot of kin people here, a lot of my fans, and a lot of the people who made me who I am today wanting to see me. I would be glad to fight here in Louisville, but as you know, uh, the promoters offer you so much money in other cities, and, uh, and whoever offers the most money for the same opponent, well, then naturally we go there, uh, because this is, this, is, this is a business, and we, we go uh, where the most mon money is, which is natural. But uh, for Louisville, they're talking about this fellow by the name of Billy Daniels. People think he can beat me, and they also think this Cleveland Williams fellow can beat me. So I just told the promoter here, if he could get Billy Daniels and Cleveland Williams here, I'll whip them both in the same night. Thank you, young man. Okay, thanks. Good night. Hello. Hello. Clay? Yes. This is Champ speaking. Yeah, I want to know if you ever rigged a fight, or if you have ever... Uh, had intended to rig a fight. Oh, I'll get, you, I'll get your question before you finish. In other words, you're saying that I'm a crook. You're saying that all the promoters are crooks and the boxing managers are crooks. Well, I but uh, I do not rig a fight. A lot of people, I can't blame you, but if I was a, a boxing fan and if I see a fellow in 15 or uh, uh, 16 professional fights, call 11 of them in the exact round in which he called, I would say that uh, uh, he, he was fixing them too. 
but uh, uh, you're awful wrong, Larry. I've never thought about fixing a fight. I wouldn't jeopardize my uh, reputation and my possibilities of uh, being a future champion for something like that. But I can't. But managers, how do you know they ain't already rigged? Well, uh, well, if it's rigged, I know nothing about it. And if it is rigged, why would the fella fall in the round that I say he's going to fall in? That, that makes it look too uh, suspicious. That's what makes it look rigged. But it's not rigged. If it was rigged, if I said he would fall in five, most likely he, would, he should fall in six, uh, maybe three. But it's not rigged. I, I'm just that great. I have the speed and ability That's to take him out in the round I won't. I've been a fighter for years, and I know when a guy can fall and when he can't fall. Well, I'm fighting now, and uh, what weight were you when you were fighting, sir? Well, I knocked him out. I knocked one man out. I weighed 270 pounds. Well, wh how much did you weigh? I'm getting ready to tell you what round you would have fell in. Oh. How much did you weigh? I'll give you a hundred dollars. I can knock you out in one round. All right, sir. This we're not having a contest between the listeners and Clay, and it was rather a, an unfair question. We uh, don't have a guest here to have his honesty impugned. Juniper five two three eight five. Hello. Mel. Yes. Uh, yes, I like to talk to you. I'm a Joe Kett, nine forty Ocean Avenue. Yes, sir, Mr. Kett. I like to, uh, Mr. Clay. Uh, I need one question. When you was in the in the Golden Block, I mean the Golden Club Chain, all over there. When the Olympics, that was. Uh, in Rome. Uh, sir. Yeah, in in the uh, Rome, that was the Olympics. Rome and uh, when the gold and uh, that gold medal over there for, the, you brought it back to America. The, uh, how did the people treat you over there? Well, it treated me real nice. As a matter of fact, we had a w wonderful time in Rome, and all we had time to do in Rome, we didn't have enough time to go out to see the city. All we did in Rome was uh, train and eat and sleep. And the next day after I won the gold medal, I had to leave. But as far as treatment and hospitality was concerned, you couldn't beat it. Uh, Mr. Clay, I'll tell you, I'm a wet to, wet to World War II was over there, see? And our glorious punk, I'm 100% behind you. And I hope you win the Thank you. championship of the world. Thank you. Well, I'm glad to hear someone say something good about me. Oh, wait, boy, too. I'm right behind you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good night. Hello, Matt's here with Cassius Clay. Uh, I'd like to ask him, does he plan to, uh, to be the youngest fighter uh, in the world? I've read where he uh, plans to be. You mean the youngest champion, ma'am? Yes, the youngest champion. Well, yes, I plan to be the youngest heavyweight champion in history, and everything is working right on schedule. My timetable is on schedule. I'm the world number fourth ranked heavyweight. I'm, I'm one fight from the crown. Listen, as a matter of fact, the heavyweight champion can't wait to get his hands on me, so it's only a matter of time. And then, as I say, the fight will go eight rounds, and then my dream will be true. I would be the youngest heavyweight champion in history. Well, won't you have to make that for your 22? Well, Floyd Patterson won the championship two months before he was 22. So uh, I will have my 21st birthday, January the 17th. So I have at least three months before I'm 22. So I, I really have a little, I have about 14 months. Well, good luck. I hope you make Thank it. Thank you very much. Hello? Uh, this is Ted Jackson, and I'd like to ask Cassius Clay uh, when he's going to fight. Uh, does he think that he can whip Floyd Patterson? Well, yes, I don't only think I can whip Floyd Patterson, but I know I can whip Floyd Patterson. A fight between me and Floyd Patterson, let me see, Floyd's Sonny Liston knocked him out in one minute and six seconds of the first round. I'm better than Sonny Liston. I wouldn't want to, uh, I want to give the people their money's worth. Uh, Floyd Patterson would fall in two rounds. Thank you. Hello. I'd like to talk with Mr. Clay. This is he on the end. Cassius, in connection with the uh, recent investigations going on right now in New York, uh, with Kit Perrette's death and so forth, and their suggestions about uh, changing some rules as far as boxing is concerned, the size of the gloves and one thing or another, having uh, referees uh, being uh, professional such as uh, your baseball umpires and so. Do you see any changes in uh, well, I don't see no reason to make any changes in boxing as far as one or two deaths in the last 10 years are concerned. As a matter of fact, I was look, looking at the statistics when I was out in Los Angeles, my last fight. Um, uh, five times as many football players get killed as boxing. They haven't talked about uh, making any new football helmets or things. And, and and many other sports, boxing is, boxing has less deaths than any other sport. But the only a lot of people ask me, do boxing worry me? 
boxing do not worry me. Airplanes wear me. As a matter of fact, 97 went down another day, and they had a headline, and that was all. Well, and they must worry you because I was at the uh, airport when you came in from Rome, and that was about an hour late, and you had a lot of people worried. Yes. Recall that time at Stanford Field? I remember, and I don't like airplanes. <laughs> well, mm. I wish you a lot of luck, and you're doing a lot for the city of Louisville. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good night. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, hello. Yes. Uh, my name is Bill Powell. Yes, Mr. Powell. What do you think your chances would be if you were fighting the great Rocky Marciano in his prime? Well, Rocky Marciano in his prime, it just might. I noticed you said the great Rocky Marciano. Yes. Sir. Well, uh, Rocky Marciano was a good fighter, but to me, he was not a great fighter. Anybody that beats old man like Joe Lewis, I, that, I do not brag. I'll give myself credit or nothing for s beating a man such as Archie Moore. Uh, no fighter can be called great by getting his reputation on old men. But uh, I would say Rocky Marciano, with his height, his style with me would go about mm, five rounds. You mean you would last five rounds with Rocky Marciano? No, he would last five with me. <laughs> <laughs> I do not get hit. I'm too classy. I'm too tall and too fat. Uh -huh. Joe Lewis went, I think, how many, 10 or 11 or 9 or something, that old man. Okay, thank you. Thank you, You're sir. You're welcome. Hello. Hello, Cassius. Yes. Uh, how do the how do the how do the foreign fighters compare with the American fighters? Well, the foreign fighters over there, there are not too many countries such as Russia, Russia, and a lot of parts of Germany. Foreign fighters don't, uh, they, they just stay in the Olympics. That's all they prepare for is amateur competition. They do not turn professional, and they are not too skillful. They're mostly, uh, you might say, uh, Rocky Marciano-style fighters or Gene Fulman-type fighters, Dick Tiger, fighters such as they, they are bulls. They are not uh, classy boxers. They are awful strong. I thought of enough of them to know. Thank you. Good, yeah. Get my best wishes. Thank you. Hello. This is Ronnie Potter. Yes, sir. And I'd like to know uh, if Mr. Clay ever expects to become the fighter that Joe Lewis was. Well, uh, I expect to come uh, as well known as Joe Lewis. As a matter of fact, I received a lot of publicity right now, more than he did at his uh, at that stage. I'm not the type of fighter Joe Lewis. He was a flat-footed, strong fighter, but I am, a, a, you may say, a heavyweight Sugar Ray Robinson. A lot of people compare me, my footwork, my speed, and boxing ability, they compare me with Sugar Ray Robinson, and I'm also a predictor. When I go into the fight, I predict the round. I'm a lot different from Joe Lewis, and I love to talk. Joe Lewis didn't talk too much. Uh, how would you like to fight him? Well, right now, it wouldn't be no fight, but in Joe Lewis's day, uh, uh, I saw him fight a fellow by the name of Billy Kahn, and Billy Kahn almost beat him. Uh, Joe Lewis, first place, he couldn't catch me, um, just as tall. Uh, I predicted I would beat Joe Lewis. I wouldn't call around on him. Okay, thank you. You're thank welcome. you. You're listening to Juniper 5, 2385. My name is Milton Metz, and our guest tonight is Cassius Clay, the fourth-ranked world heavyweight. Our question, what's it like to be a world-famous boxer? Let's take a moment out here for a word from uh, one of our sponsors and then back to the conversations between Cassius Clay and the listeners. Your headquarters for floor covering. That's J. Raymond Rice and Son, 1711 West Market Street, where you can choose from over 200 different qualities of carpet in addition to a full line of linoleum, floor, and wall tile. J. Raymond Rice and Son also make Venetian blinds and window shades to your specifications. Since 1938, J. Raymond Rice and Son has served the Louisville area with the finest in floor coverings and accessories, building a reputation of distinction. J. Raymond Rice and Son was awarded the job of installing carpeting at Trinity Towers. Now, this was the largest single installation of carpeting awarded in this area in the past 40 years. They were chosen because they engineered a carpet for striking appearance, long wear, at a reasonable price. Manufactured especially for Trinity Towers, the colors were made to the decorator's specifications. J. Raymond Rice and Son is proud of the part they played in making Trinity Towers an important phase in the rebuilding of downtown Louisville. You're welcome anytime to visit J. Raymond Rice and Son, 1711 West Market Street. Now back to our calls. Hello. My name is James Wright. All right. I live, um... What would you like to ask, Mr. Clay? If you ever lose your rain, if you ever lose your temper in the rain, 
like Emmett Griffin. What was your question? Like, 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 um. Uh, do, do I, do I, do I ever lose my temper? If you. If I ever, what would happen? Well, you, if you ever lose your temper in the ring like Emmett Griffin, what would, what would you feel among yourself? Well, how can we say that Emmett Griffin uh, lost his temper? Did you know what he was thinking? I mean, Emmett Griffin has always been an aggressive fighter, and that's his style, and uh, he happened to tag Benny Kid Perrette with a solid punch and shook him up. Uh, I don't know nothing about how angry was he, or I could be. I could have been angry in my last fight. You didn't know. Okay, thank you, young man. Good night. Hello. Uh, how how long do you run in the day, in the mornings? Oh, uh, sometimes I run as um, uh, much as ten miles when I feel like it. But on the average, training for fight, uh, I run three miles every morning. Right, thanks. You're welcome. This is Juniper 52385. What's it like to be a world famous boxer? Tonight, meet Louisville's Cassius Clay, our guest here. We'll be here for more than an hour until 10 o'clock tonight. Every night we're on with a different question. Uh, occasionally, we have a guest, and in this case, it of course is the fourth ranked heavyweight boxer in the world, Louisville's own Cassius Clay, who has consented to come down here and uh, Talk to people from near and far who uh, want to call us. Our number is Juniper 52385. Please give your name when you call in and turn your radio down. Hello. Mr. Matt? Yes. My name is Larry King. Yes, Larry. Uh, I would like to ask Cassius a question. All right, he's listening to you. Do you think that you are as good a boxer as Joe Lewis was at your age? Well, I don't only think but I know that I'm not as good, but better. I'm more, I'm faster than Joe Lewis. I'm taller and heavier than he was at my age. I'm more classier, I'm faster, and I'm more colorful, and I talk more. Thank you, anything else? Do you think that you are as great now as Joe Lewis was? No, I don't. I, as a matter of fact, I know I'm not as great as Joe Lewis was at this stage of my career. Thank you. All right. Hello. Hey, Cass, my name is Danny Hutton. I'd like to know um, if you had very much trouble taking the Olympics. Well, I had a lot of trouble taking the Olympics. Fighting is never easy. At first, I had to win the National Golden Glove Championship. Then I had to beat the United States Army Champion. I had to beat the United States uh, National College Champion. I had to beat the United States Air Force Champion. That wasn't all. That made me the United States uh, Light Heavyweight Champion. Then I had to go to Rome, Italy, and I had to, um, I had I had four rough fights with a Belgium, uh, Australian, a uh, Poland. Polish boy and a Russian, and and there were 64 boys in my division, and we eliminated each other. So that made me the world's champion, and it was not an easy time. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Hello. This is Jimmy Silk, and uh, uh, I guess uh, uh, is Clay. Uh, uh, how long do you think you'll go turn this? Uh, well, I told you, Sunday list. You, if you've been reading the paper, or if you've been listening to the program, I said Sunday listen that fight I predict would go eight rounds with me standing over Sonny Liston. And if he keeps popping off like he's doing, I'm going to have to cut that prediction to four. As you recall when I fought Archie Moore, I said, Archie Moore, you must fall in eight. I was talking to him just like I'm talking to you. I said, Archie, you must fall in eight. He kept popping off about a punch called the lip buttoner, so I had to cut it from eight to four. Thanks. So Sonny Liston will go eight rounds with me. Yeah, are you? Oh, uh, that's all. All right, thank you. This is WHAS. In Louisville, Kentucky, 840 on your dial, Clear Channel Radio, 50,000 watts.